Boom. There's a purpose in life while we're living. Boom, boom. We share a common goal to make it to heaven. Boom, boom. Shining our lights so others might see. We've got a purpose in life. We're working hard to be with you. that uh, you are a constant viewer of the Blessed Connection. And if you are watching us, then you know just a little bit ago I had my grandson, Mercy, on the set with me. Well, today I get a chance to have my granddaughter, Grace. Say hi to everybody, Grace. Tell them hi. Wave to everybody. Wave. <laughs> She's a little shy. But this is my grandbaby, Grace, and I love having some grace and some mercy. Hey, listen, you got to watch this uh, next segment. It's about four things every child needs this summer. No, it, it's not about a camping trip. It's not about a swimsuit. It's not about a Nintendo game. It's not about any of those things. It's about something, though, that when you watch it, you will agree with me. Every child, grandchild, niece, nephew, Every child needs this this summer. Watch it and we'll be back in just a moment. Marry who you want to marry. Date who you want to date. If you want to date Steve and your name is Adam, date him. Marry him. Did anybody hear? That for years, the Boy Scouts stood their ground. And the Boy Scout says, listen, if you happen to be gay, I don't want you to be over our little boys. You cannot have our little boys. But because of financial pressures, the Boy Scouts decided, I'm backing up on that position. And so, in this world, that it seems as if things are going wild. Can I suggest that our young people need direction? I don't want the Supreme Court to decide how my children and my grandchildren, I want God to decide it. They need direction, and we ought to give our babies direction. That's good. That's good, Dad. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. And so, I don't want to just go alone so I can get alone. Because if I go alone so I can get alone, maybe when I get down the road to where I was trying to get, maybe it's a dead end street. The Bible said there's a way when people see it, they say, oh, it's equality. Everybody has a right. That's what this country was built on. That's what this society was built on. No, ma'am, no, sir. This society was built on God. And when we move away from God, we're headed for trouble. They need direction. I don't know about you, but somehow I need to be there to help my children and my young children as they get ready to navigate through life. The Bible said there's a way that seems right. And the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. God says, listen, 
You are an intelligent person. You are an intelligent child. You are an intelligent person. And I've given you free will to think for yourself. But don't ever think that your ways are higher than my ways. I made that little computer in your head. I am the creator. And so my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. In the world, where everybody has seemed to let God go. In the way, world where everybody seems to be doing whatever they want to do. Sundays I'll sleep in. Sundays I'll wash the car. Sundays I'll cut the grass. Sundays I'll just relax and have a cup of coffee. No, Sunday is the Lord's day. Love what Solomon tells his young child. Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 through 13, My son... Keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For this command is a lamp. This teaching is a light and co correction will instruct the way of life. Yeah. What, what, are, what, are you, what are you saying? Solomon, I'm saying to the young people, don't get it twisted. Mama wasn't born last night. She was born at night, but not last night. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Daddy is not confused. Daddy's got it together. And so what he said, if you want a long life, you want a happy life, then you need to open your ears and hear what daddy and mama saying. Somebody needs to remind our young people, you know what? You are a new generation, but we've traveled a path. And since we traveled a path and we paid the price, you ought to give us an audience. We'll save you from skinning up your knees. We'll save you from falling down and busting your lip. But somehow you got to say to yourself, I need direction. I'm on my mission. I'm trying to make it in life, and I need all of the instruction. I need all of the discipline. I need everything so I can stand tall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody shout again. They need direction. They need direction. Point number three. Point number three is they need love. Somebody shout, they need, they need love. Shout it again, they need love. They need love. Listen, I, I need to tell you a story, and you, you got to promise not to tell anybody. <laughs> I, I have not always stood behind the pulpit. In fact, if my mama, she's in the audience, if my mama would tell you, she'd say, you know what, he was a rascal. All right. <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember my big sister and I got into an argument about the TV program that we were watching. And so you got to go back in my shoes now. We had one TV in the house. Hello, one TV in the house. It's it, it one of those wood cabinet TVs. Y'all feeling me? It, it was a black and white TV. And so, and so mom and daddy, they gone somewhere, and, and big sister's trying to tell me she want to watch this, and I'm saying, no, I want to watch this. Mom and daddy get back home. They said, well, we left big sister in charge. I got mad. <laughs> I got mad. I went in my bedroom, and, and I started pulling out the stuff in my dresser, and I put it in a little cardboard box. I, I got to school the next day, and I asked one of the little boys, I said, you know what, uh, I need a place to stay. Can I come stay with you? Right. He, he, said, he said, yeah, come on. I got my little cardboard box, and I start kicking my stuff down the street. 
My daddy, he worked tonight, so he in the bedroom sleep. My mama's got a beauty shop. She's got the only car. She's at the beauty shop, and I'm kicking my stuff down the street. I'm getting while the getting is good. I'm, I see my sister walking from Cashmere High School coming down the street, and so I kick my box in the ditch. She said, boy, where are you going? I'm running away from home. I'm running, I don't care anymore. I don't care, I'm running away from home. She walk on by, I get my box. I kick it a little further. Finally, I get to the young man's house. And, and I don't know how it happened, but the next thing I knew, my mom and daddy were driving up in the car. I, I, I guess the lady must have called my mom and daddy. I, I remember I was so scared I ain't know what to do. I thought I had escaped. And now I'm going back to captivity and they're going to kill me. Listen, listen. Mama had taken off from work. She had drove the car home, came and got daddy. They were, we were in a green Oldsmobile. They had that Oldsmobile. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm just terrified. I'm sitting in the back seat. I got my clothes. But here's what I remember most. Instead of my daddy half killing me, instead of my mama putting me on probation, you know what they did? Yeah, they should have. You know what they did? They showed me love. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what happened. Let me have that mic. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened, but, 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 but maybe something clicked in my daddy's head. Maybe something clicked in my mother's head, and, and somehow they said, you know what? Let's show him love. Can I suggest today that many times when our young people act up, all they are asking for is, Mama, do you really love me? Yeah. Granny, do you really love me? You don't have to beat me to death to show me you love me. Paul says, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I acted as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. See, every once in a while, our children are reminding us, Daddy, you climbed Fool's Hill, didn't you? And Daddy, I'm going to chip off the old block. I'm just out climbing Fool's Hill also. And what they want us to remember is, listen, how we got from down from Fool's Hill is by God's love and God's grace. And if you show me some love, if you show me some grace, I'll get down too. Instead of talking about how bad that child is, instead of talking about you can't tell that child anything, maybe, maybe what we need is to try a little love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's love that makes the world go round. And so, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, our children, they need us. Somebody shout us. Not only do they need us, they need direction. Not only do they need direction, they need love. Fourth thing, fourth thing. They need the Lord. Somebody help me. Shout, they need the Lord. Shout again, they need the Lord. I started this sermon talking about my days as a youth minister. But even before I became a youth minister, I worked with young people. I, I remember I'm at the Fifth Ward Church of Christ. I'm at college. And somebody says, put John Jr. in that senior high class. Let him talk to those young people. And so John Kelly, one of the elders, and myself, 
talk to senior high class. That's what I did on Sundays. But during the course of the week, as I went to school, I worked, and I drove a school bus. And so I got up early in the morning and got to the place and got the bus and, and started looking for picking up the little kids. I will never forget that I picked up a young man by the name of Donald Lynn Carr. Donald Lynn was a good child. And it was a joy for me as a young person going through college to reach to young people. And so I reached to Don Lynn. But you see, Don Lynn didn't have just a relationship with me as I drove Monday through Friday. Don Lynn was the son of the members of the Church of Christ, and Don Lynn was in my Sunday school class. I love Don Lynn. It was a joy to pull up in front of Don Lynn's house and blow the horn, and he would come out. It was a joy to have Don Lynn in my Sunday school class, but somehow as time went on and Don graduated from high school, Don stopped going to Sunday school class. It bothered me. It bothered me. It's like, wh where is Don? I like Don. Why isn't Don going to, to church? Why isn't Don coming to church? Why isn't Don in the Sunday school class? So I remember one Sunday, Brother John Kelly and I, we decided what we're going to do is we're going to go visit Don Lynn. Uh, we're going with Sunday school teachers. He's not coming to class. I need to encourage Don Lynn. Don Lynn's not coming to class. So we got in our car, and we drove to Don Lynn's house. And I remember sitting there that day, sitting at the piano, because that's the seat I sat on. And I remember reaching to Don Lynn and saying to Don Lynn, Don Lynn, you, you need to be in church. You need the Lord. Don Lynn, I, no, I'm getting married. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to get married. It's like, no, Don, you need the Lord. Don, you, you need to come back to church tonight. I don't remember. I didn't see Don Lynn that Sunday night. I didn't. The next time I saw Don Lynn, it was a week later. The news had come. They had gunned Don Lynn down on a Saturday night. He laid in a ditch all Saturday night. His body riddled with bullets. I had never been to a funeral where so many young people were there. And I reminded myself and I remind young people today don't think that you're going to live to be a ripe old age. Don't, don't think that you can sow your wild oats now and, and you won't reap a harvest. Somebody needs to remind our young people, you really don't have a lease on life. The Bible says, what is your life? It's just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. That funeral, I stood. I remember when his mom sent me a thank you card for being at the service. She included in the card the invitation to his wedding. It was already printed, already ready to go. I remember later in life when I became a youth minister, I used to take our kids, and we used to have a wonderful time together. We used to have just the best time. And there was a young person in our class, and I won't call his name because his mother might be in the audience right now. But she was a faithful member of the church, and it was a Wednesday night, and she was teaching Bible class, and she didn't want to be late, and she left a son at home, and a son was playing, and she, he was playing with some other young people, somebody pull out a gun. They said, let's play Russian roulette. Somebody spent the gun around and 
Somebody picked it up and clicked. Then it came to him and spin it around and he put it to his head and the young boys there said all they remember. They really didn't remember the gunshot. All they remember is hearing him say, oh. Can I, can I remind somebody that the Bible says, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. And, and so I, I know it's a crazy world. I, I know it's a world where you feel like you got to do your own thing because you've grown. But can I remind you that sooner or later we're all going to stand before God. The Bible says the books will be open. And, and so, so I, I, I wanted to encourage our young people, as you move out in the summer, don't forget you need the Lord. Amen. Somebody shout, remember the Lord. Where are you today? I, I wanted to say to our parents, I wanted to say to the grandparents, I wanted to say to the aunts, to the uncles, to the nephews, I wanted to say don't get so fast and don't be so busy that you drop the most precious gift you have between the cracks. They need us. Somebody shout, they need us. I want it to mind this church that you can't do what everybody else does and still be a child of God. Our, our young people, they need direction. So what if the world says it's okay to be gay? Does God say it's okay to be gay? Somebody says he's gay bashing. I'm not gay bashing. I am trying to say, what does God, who has the final word, say about it? You ask me, I love everybody. But that's not the issue, whether I love everybody. The issue is, what is God going to say when our children don't have direction? I wanted to remind us that our young people need love. Instead of kicking them to the curb, instead of pushing them off to the side, well, what they, what they need is they need to be loved. When we love our young people, even in spite of the fact that they have bruised themselves, I never will forget the story. Luke chapter 15, the old man, the, the prodigal son, is on the hill, and he sees his son coming. His son is smelly because his son has been in the pig pen. His son doesn't have any shoes. His son looks horrible, but the father says, kill the fatty cat. Bring the robe. My son who was lost is not found. And then lastly, I wanted to remind everybody that our children, and not only our children, but we all need the Lord. Somebody shout, we need the Lord. Need the Lord. Shout it again, we need, the Lord. we need the Lord. Four things every child needs this summer. They need us. They need direction. They need love. They need the Lord. The truth of the matter is, those four things we all need. We need each other. No man is an island. We need direction. We need love. And we need the Lord. Stand on your feet this morning. What a joy it is. What a joy it is to be in the house of God. What a joy it is to remind ourselves this is the Lord's day. We're the Lord's people. This is the Lord's family. What a wonderful time to rededicate your life. And we're back again. Grace, tell them hi. Give them a wave. Wave to them, Grace. <laughs> and you got a wave now. Uh, listen, did you enjoy that? Four things. Four things every child needs this summer. They need us. They need direction. They need love. And they need the Lord. Those are the four things that we all need.
And I pray that uh, the message will bless you and you'll say, you know, I, my grandchild needs that one. My grandson needs that one. I need to be a better father, a better mother. You know, I bless you. Uh, in just a moment, uh, you're going to see that final segment. The final segment, I always like to show it because it solidifies the importance of knowing the Lord. You need the Lord. I need the Lord. If you're not in a right relationship with the Lord, watch this last segment. It'll bless your life. I've got to go now. I certainly hope you enjoyed the program. But before I go, I, I have a question for you. Have you accepted Jesus as the Lord of your life? Have you allowed him to come in and rule your life? Have you made him the king of your life? When I was a little boy, eight years old in fact, I accepted Jesus as the Lord of my life. I, I can see it right now. I'm in the living room <laughs> with my mom and dad. You know, the living room was a place that only the insurance salesman and the Watkins product salesman from down the street would come. But I was in that room because mom and dad wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing. I can hear them right now. Dad wanted to make sure that I had heard the gospel for myself. Dad wanted to make sure that I believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Dad wanted to make sure that I confessed with my own mouth that Jesus Christ was Lord and King. He wanted to make sure I repented of my sins. I, I, I turned from my sin. And then I went down in the watery grave of baptism at eight years old in, at the Fifth Ward Church of Christ. Yes, I, I know I, I know that sounds old-fashioned to get baptized. Somebody says, I don't want to go through all of that. But that's biblical. It's biblical to be baptized. You know what the Bible says in Acts, the second chapter, verse number 38? The Bible says, Peter replied and said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And so... Even today as I stand here, I want to make sure that everything that God has required for me to do, I do. I want to speak where the Bible speaks. And so, just a little bit ago, I was in Israel, and I got to the river.